Good day everybody and we are once again back again together. All right, so we are looking at uh, this would be the last question in that IEB uh, question paper. All right, uh, and uh, by the way, this, this is relevant for both IEB as well as DBE. So please, uh, for those of you doing the DBE exams, uh, please don't be thrown off by the fact that we're right, we, we, we've been doing IEP exams. Okay, uh, as I said, I keep saying uh, physics is physics is physics at the end of the day. So um, if you haven't subscribed, please join us and be part of the family. Okay, uh, so I'll be doing or I'll be looking at the photoelectric effect uh, uh, today. And um, please, uh, for those of you who might need assistance, whether in mathematics or physical science, please don't be, uh, don't hesitate rather to, uh, you know, get in contact with us. And our email address is info at mlungisingosi, my name and surname, dot co dot za. That's info at mlungisingosi dot co dot za. Okay, let's see what this question has in store for us. Okay, now they say the graph, uh, shows how the maximum kinetic energy of electrons emitted from a surface of calcium metal varies with the frequency of the incident radiation. Now, uh, just something to note. Remember when we are, we, we, we are answering questions that have to do with the photoelectric effect. In fact, let me talk about this graph here. So this would tell you that, um, you know, from actually four, uh, uh, four times 10 to the power 14 hertz, uh, right up until that value there, there was no kinetic energy. And why is that? It simply tells us that uh, we have not reached what you call the threshold frequency, the minimum frequency that is required in order to emit electrons. Now, for those of you who might find this part challenging, uh, please just go and revisit our videos on the photoelectric effect. I think I tried to explain it in the most remarkable way possible. Okay, uh, just please go and, and, and look at those videos there. So it means that uh, when you look at this here, the minimum uh, uh, energy that is required would not have been reached because to emit electrons from a metal surface, you need a certain amount of energy, right? Uh, we call that the, the work function, right? So um, at this point here, only do we start having uh, electrons beginning to move. That's why we call uh, kinetic energy. Or that's why we refer to kinetic energy. So electrons start to move only at that point there, right? So um, let's just answer the questions, right? They say define the work function, right? Remember that work function, that's the minimum energy required in order to emit electrons from a metal surface okay right so uh, we said all right calculate the work function of calcium now i want you to please note in order to calculate the work function and uh, if you find yourself a little bit lost here uh, i think it it really would be wise for you to go and visit that video that i made so we want to calculate the work function now the work function would always be um, uh, in this case, Planck's constant multiplied by uh, the threshold frequency. But where do we get the threshold frequency from this graph? We get it from this point here, right? Uh, if I look at that, I think I'm inclined to uh, think that my threshold frequency might be, let's see, so this is between 6 and 7. Um, I would say that looks like 6.9, okay? It looks like it's in the middle between uh, that uh, 6 and, uh, I mean, uh, 6.8 and 6 point, and, and 7. So it looks like 6.9. So I'm just going to say um, it's Planck's constant. And by the way, remember you are given uh, Planck's constant. That's going to be, uh, that's 6.63. Uh, times 10 to the power and minus 34. Uh, and in fact, by the way, for those of you who are writing the IEB, you are given that value as 6.6 .6 actually. Okay. Uh, it's for, uh, you know, the GDE exam, they use 6.63. .6 so just please, if you're not sure, just go to your data sheet and just check uh, which, which one you're given. Okay. 
right and we said the threshold frequency in this case it's 6.9 times 10 to the power 14 okay right so we're going to just pull out a calculator there okay so that's 6.6 .6, uh, that's minus 34 multiplied by 6.9 times 10 to the power 14 and I get a value of 4.55 okay times 10 to the power minus 19 joules okay just please verify that for me and um, yeah okay so the next question they say the experiment is repeated using magnesium instead of calcium now please I want you to note that different metals have got different work functions okay so it would depend whether the metal that we are replacing with has a higher work function or has a, a lower work function okay so it means if if the work function for that metal is higher it would be more difficult obviously to emit electrons right but if it has a lower work function it means that it would have uh, you know a uh, it, it would be easier rather to emit electrons from that surface right so uh, they say the work function of magnesium is 1.3 times the work function of uh, calcium so it means you'd actually need more energy right they say draw a second line on the graph uh, on the answer sheet uh, as illustrated um, the the uh, right as illustrate to illustrate rather the results of the experiment with magnesium uh, unfortunately i do not have that graph so uh, in that case i would have to just make a plan so i will just use the one that's given here all right now first of all they told us that the uh, you know the work function is 1.3 times meaning that also the threshold frequency would actually be 1.3 times so let me find that 1.3 times remember we said it was 6.9 right uh, so that's 6.9 okay uh, that's to the power 14 and I get a value of 8.97 okay so I get it I get that value of uh, 8.97 so that means our threshold frequency would now be at 8.97 um, I try as best as I possibly can uh, so let's put it there okay right and then all I'm simply going to do is just make sure that I draw a line now you have to make it a point that your line is actually parallel to this one here uh, because remember the gradient under this graph is actually Planck's constant and remember Planck's constant is 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 the same for for both instances right uh, so let's try uh, I'm just going to pull that closer there okay and just make that line as close as possible uh, you know parallel to that other line there okay and all we simply do is just draw that over there okay uh, so there it is uh, plan made <laughs> okay uh, so that is what it would look like please just make sure that it is parallel right okay let's go to the next portion of our question right and the next section uh, just simply says right so we are given the four emission spectra uh, lines um, emission lines that's pqr and s in the hydrogen spectrum okay I illustrated so they give us those uh, line emissions there uh, uh, line emission spectra rather uh, they say the wavelength of the four uh, emission lines are provided so they gave us the wavelength there now they say frequencies associated with these wavelengths are emitted uh, when electrons move from a higher energy level to the 3.4 negative 3.4 electron volts energy level okay uh, we'll talk about electron volts uh, hopefully uh, the the question does lead us there but I'll, I'll explain to you just in just a second right so uh, they say first of all calculate the value of the energy 
of the light associated with uh, emission line S. So remember, we've got the wavelength of that light. We want the energy. Now, usually, remember, under normal circumstances, we say energy is equals to HF, right? E is equals to HF. But in this case, remember, we're not given the frequency, but we're given the wavelength. But we know that frequency is speed over wavelength. You remember that F is equals to C over lambda, right? Which is the wavelength. So I'm just going to say, well, it means to replace frequency there, I'm going to have C over lambda. So uh, again, Planck's constant, that's 6.6 .6 times 10 minus 34. Okay. And I'm multiplying that by uh, the speed of light. Remember, that's given 3 times 10 to the power 8. And divided by that wavelength there, remember this, it's given as 6.58. But keep in mind, okay, it's got that factor there, which is times 10 to the power minus 7. Okay, please don't forget that. Okay, and let's find our value. So you'll have 6.6. .6 Okay, um, multiplied, okay, that's minus 34. Uh, and ultimately, I get a value of 3 times 10 to the power minus 19. Okay, so that's minus 19. And remember, that is in joules. So that's the amount of energy that will be emitted, right? Now, uh, they say which line, okay, the next one, they say which line, um, which emission line, rather, is produced by the transition of the highest energy level uh, to the, uh, the 3.4 electron volts, minus 3.4 electron volt energy level. Briefly explain your answer. Right, now quickly, let's talk about electron volts, right? What exactly do they symbolize? So an electron volt is a unit of uh, energy. I know I'm not answering this question. I'll come back to the question. Um, this I'm just trying to help, uh, you know, someone who may not uh, know what this is. So an electron volt is basically a unit of energy, okay, uh, for one photon. So we, we, we actually say that's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So one electron volt would be 1.6 times 10 minus 19. Now, um, uh, so obviously, if they, if ever they ever said to us, we need to calculate, you know, the energy of that photon or whatever the case may be, right? Uh, you would then need to check, you know, the the difference uh, from the highest to, you know, 3.4 or whatever the case may be. Uh, if they tell us the electron volts for a particular photon, you can now, if, suppose they said it was 3.4. So it means if it was 3.4 electron volts, uh, you would therefore say uh, 3.4 multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19, and that would give you the energy of that particular uh, photon. Okay. Right, yeah. Uh, just in case they ask you that uh, in future. But now, uh, remember, they wanted to know uh, um, which spectrum would be produced or which line uh, which emission line would be produced by the transition. Now note from the highest energy level, right, to the minus 3.4 energy level. So it means we want the highest electron transition, right? So in this case, we want maximum energy. We want the maximum energy change, right, for a particular uh, photon. So in this case, I want you to note, right, in order for the energy change to be maximum, remember that energy and, you know, we've just uh, used it now, and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other. So if I, okay, let me just put it this way, HC over E, right, same equation, uh, but I'm now making a uh, wavelength the subject of the formula. So for higher energy, what would that mean for wavelength? It means you've got the lowest wavelength, right? So which one of those has the lowest wavelength? Definitely, in this case, it would be P. 
So our answer to that, okay, would be P, okay? But how do we explain it? We explain it in terms of this equation that uh, wavelength is inversely proportional to the change in the energy, okay? Right, so uh, as a result, uh, the smallest wavelength would have the highest energy, okay? Right, and then the very last one, okay, they say state Y knowledge of the uh, emission spectrum, uh, emission line wavelength is useful to scientists to identify substances. Okay, I would say there, um, uh, you know, obviously each element has got, uh, you know, a, a unique line spectrum. So, I mean, it's easier to identify elements by their line emission spectrum, right? So, uh, obviously, knowledge of the different emission spectrum would help us to, or would help scientists like yourselves, okay, to easily identify elements, okay? All right, and uh, by the way, uh, I think we've gotten to the end of that IEB uh, paper. Uh, of course, there's a couple of suggestions that you guys have sent through. I'll try and attend to them uh, before you write your final exam. Uh, but otherwise, it's really been good. You would have gotten yourself the 200 marks there. And I hope that you're getting yourselves ready. Okay, uh, but otherwise, from me for now, please, 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 don't stop working hard. Don't stop. Uh, don't stop following us. You know. Uh, make sure that you subscribe, and uh, you know. Let's get those incredible results. Okay. I hope I've been able to show you that uh, you can actually get great results in physical science. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.